it's Shannon. I'm so excited that you joined us tonight for Pop on the Rocks tour of the Kelso House. And we, are, of course, are going to be having some conversation live, but we wanted to film some of the tour in daylight so you can see the Kelso House in all of her beauty. Um, and we especially are excited about starting out front here because it really showcases the, the best part of what's happened so far at the Kelso House. Um, for those of you that are familiar with it and its history, um, you know that for, for many years, the porch looks like it might just fall right off. And in fact, um, there were attempts to fix the porch foundation and a lot of people shied away and got scared. Um, when we called Guido, Cosmo was like, absolutely we'll do it. And then Tom Guido was like, I don't know about this. Are you crazy? So even the Guidos had to be a little bit convinced, but um, they of course figured it out. And so the porch is now completely stable. Um, we've worked to restore the, um, the shingles, the stairs, the porch floor, the porch decking. We'll walk up on the porch and show that to you. It's gorgeous. Um, and then you'll see as we walk through the tour that we're also working to restore the second floor porch. Um, which has been generously sponsored by the Van Steenberg family, so we're very excited about that. And um, you can see that there is work happening. Um, there's lumber and things like that. Um, we'll also talk a little bit, Steph is here, and she's gonna talk a little bit about some of the classes that we've done on site. Um, the Kelso House is a learning lab, which is an important part of our mission and what we're trying to accomplish here on site. And so we've done several window workshops, both with um, people in the community that are interested in learning the skill and with um, classes at the UTSA College of uh, Architecture, Architecture, Construction, and Planning. I always have to think about that. Um, we've worked on these the lovely windows. But of course you can't totally see because they're being protected by plywood currently, but um, Steph's gonna demonstrate a little bit later. Um, some of the work that's been done on the windows. Steph, join me. Hey everyone, very smooth intro. I'm Stephanie Phillips, board member at Power Preservation Foundation. And why don't I take you over right here to show you kind of the fruits of our workshops that Shannon was just mentioning. Remove this door here. Um, so this is one of the windows that was restored as part of a wood window workshop that we held, I think in 2019. Um, so those classes, I think, are one of my favorite things that we do here at the Kelso House because they are open to both um, experienced contractors, budding contractors, as well as homeowners, novices that are just thinking about um, acquiring different skill sets. So these windows um, were in some dire condition, I would say, but as part of that workshop, they were completely removed from their opening. Um, some of the panes of glass were broken. These are all individual panes of glass. Um, so they were removed and then we cut new rectangles, put them in, and our uh, participants put in this new glazing bead and they look great. So we had about 30 people at that workshop, so they're all part of this story now, which is very exciting. And just to prove that they work, they were very exciting. So we're so glad that even the transoms, you can kind of see the numbering up there as, as some evidence of, of making sure that all the glass pieces went where they're supposed to go. So these are a testament to, to the effectiveness of those workshops. And for those of you that are watching that you know may live in a historic house, maybe even in Mona Vista, or are wondering kind of why uh, we wanted to host window workshops here, I think one of the best things about participating, even if you're not someone that's planning on being a contractor, is that you're able to kind of learn the terminology and see how these um, uh, windows actually go together, which empowers people to be able to have those conversations with their contractors and know what to look for, know how to read a wood restoration bid, which is just as important, we think, as part of homeownership. So um, we're eager to host more classes here in the future whenever we're able to, so we hope you'll join us. Yes, in fact, we have a grant that, we, um, sh that will help us to host a workshop on how to um, kind of restore the, sh the shakes Sing shingle siding like you see down here but there are parts of the um, the actual the, 
the it's not just on the porch there are other sections of the siding on the Kelso house that have that shingle application and so um, once it's safe to do so we'll be welcoming people here um, to learn how to do that restoration as well and speaking of the porch, um, I would say that the porch has been kind of the extent of the amazing work that has done, done has been done thus far, and we want to constantly give a shout out to Guido for their amazing work. Um, but right here, actually, we have one of the original capitals, I think, of um, one of the columns that was on the porch. So you can see all of the different layers, all of the different um, kind of details, especially here on this rounded capital piece see just like how much craftsmanship went into this house when it was constructed in 1906. So something that Guido did as part of the porch restoration is they, you know, measured meticulously all of these details of the capitals and they're faithfully recreating them um, as they start continuing to restore the capitals here on the Kelso house. You can kind of see some of the new ones that have gone in up top um, and we're just really grateful that we had some original ones that were still here to faithfully replicate as part of the porch restoration. And earlier Shannon had mentioned um, the beautiful like beadboard that's at the top of the porch here. This turned out so amazing. Um, there used to be, I think, a, a several holes in the ceiling yeah. <laughs> when the Kelso house was Well, acquired. and the, the decking too. Mm -hmm. It just, it looks so amazing. Like obviously it's been kind of primed now, so, um, you know, it's, it's not as lovely as it's going to be eventually when it's all clean and painted, but um, such excellent work that, that Guido was able to do to help us with this porch restoration. Right. And then, um, one of the other things, several of these other windows that you're seeing here on the, on the first level were completed as part of one of the classes with the construction science students at UTSA um, College of Architecture, Construction and Planning, which has also been a really exciting science to get that hands-on experience not only do they actually see how the materials function and how the windows operate but they go through the process of um, pitching this the story of pitching their project to the owners which are which is the POP um, they learn about bids they learn about costing for projects they learn about going down to the city and pulling permits and so it's a great way for um, those construction science students to really understand what it's going to be like in the in the field when they get onto a job site yeah and unfortunately this window is locked which it should be um, but we just want to show the detail here this entire single sash actually opens up you can lift it up like a normal one over one window so you can just kind of see the scale and detailing how that's inset from the front plane um, just the amazing detail work that's part of of this stunning house that POP is faithfully recreating so very cool stuff it would probably be good to mention too that um, you know we were able to do all of this because the house was actually donated to us by um, Cappy and Susie Lawton um, who of course are the owners of La Fonda next door and so POP took over this property in 2018 and um, we have three years to complete the exterior restoration and so 2021 is our time we have to be done with the exterior by October so a lot is going to happen and change at this property this year um, Guido is in the process of kind of mobilizing to do the roof in the next few weeks. Um, there are several layers of, of roofing. There are issues, some issues with the, the roof structure itself and so um, they'll be working with a structural engineer to make sure that we address those issues and then um, we'll be getting a new roof and after that it'll be smooth sailing. I yes. know. <laughs> okay. So so one of the things that we had to do when we acquired the Kelso House is there, for those of you that were familiar with the project, there used to be an addition here, like kind of where that blue tarp is and that wood is stacked and it went around the corner. And so we had to first have that addition taken off and it was a later addition, so it, there were no concerns from a um, design review standpoint about removing that addition. And that's why you see this one section that does not have siding. So eventually we'll be able to replicate this, this section of the siding that has the shingles siding 
And that's where we'll be able to apply that grant that we received um, to, to, to teach people how to do that application. Um, one of the other things that, obviously this door was added at some point, and so we'll be converting that middle door back into a window that's like the two on either side. So the window with the um, divided light transom above it. Um, one of the other things that the students, one of the classes at UTSA, we let the students, they, you typically the students get into groups of three or four, and then they select a project and propose it to us. And um, I think we've approved all of them. They always come up with good suggestions. But um, one of the projects was to replicate this little, uh, whatever you call this, whatever this detail is, like kind of replicate this thing that goes all the way around the base of the structure. And so um, there are certain, there are pieces of that that have been constructed by the students uh, that will ultimately go all the way around. One of the challenges of a vacant building, obviously, is just the constant kind of issues with things that go wrong or things that um, come loose. Uh, this has been, covered up many many times and you know it's like houses like to be lived in or used and loved and historic buildings in general and so we're anxious to get the exterior kind of buttoned up so that we can um, tackle the interior and, and, and ultimately get somebody into this building that can can appreciate it and love it again. So one of the other things that um, the students worked on, there's, you see this cute little window over here that has the little, what is that called? Little thing over it? I don't know, kind of a, whatever that is. Um, there was another one. So, so that's actually, that little feature there with the two windows and it kind of sticks out a little bit will be replicated over here. Um, and then one of the other things that we of course have to take into account that wasn't an issue when it was a residential house is ADA accessibility. Um, so we also, we actually only own about, well, exactly five feet out from the footprint of the house. So most of what you see here when you come to eat at LaFonda is not, does not belong to POP. Um, the parking lot is not ours. So we own just the, basically the footprint of the house and just enough to have, an, uh, you know, our access and, um, and then a parking space in the front. So we, ha we actually will have a ADA accessibility ramp that goes out this back door all the way out to the sidewalk. And so that's how um, accessibility will happen at the site once it's ready to be occupied. So you'll see that there's a lot of stuff in here. Um, one of the ways that we are bringing in a little bit of money every month is that um, CAPI continues to utilize the interior of the building for a little bit of storage for the restaurant La Fonda. Um, they are going to be moving out fairly soon um, because, as I mentioned, once we finish with the exterior, we'll turn our attention to the interior and so we'll have to have a, a, an empty place so we have room to work. fortunate that we have a lot of the you know the details we have the um, the covered ceilings and a lot of the mow work on the first floor is in place um, we were you know we're lucky to have the windows to be able to restore them um, we see fireplaces and, um, and even some of the the features of the stair of the staircase are still evident I mean obviously the the railings are missing but um, you can see the kind of inlaid detail in the wood floors and, and some of the really um, beautiful features. I, I wish I could have visited this house before someone decided to start dismantling it. Yeah, and something that we're really excited about in the coming year, in addition to finishing the exterior of the Kelso house, is we have a, several partnerships, like this is a group joint effort of so many different partners in our community and we're really eager to welcome um, a new group of participants from um, the UT Austin School of Architecture. 
um, as part of their materials conservation coursework in their Master of Science of Historic Preservation graduate program. Um, some students will be coming here to take some samples of uh, the wood that's in the house, the paint that's here, um, some of the stucco that you saw on the exterior of the uh, chimneys to be able to tell us exactly what those materials are and to kind of help us put together the story of the changes as well as the original materials that were part of the construction of the Kelso House, which I think will be such an exciting opportunity for us to document that information and kind of tell that whole story. So thank you, UT students, for um, helping us with that. And another partnership that we mentioned earlier in this presentation is through um, our local architecture firm here, Lake Flato. So something that we're so excited about is that we are on track for the Kelso House to be the first zero net carbon um, certified residential structure here in San Antonio, which that's a lot of words, but it's really cool and it's really important. Um, and it's part of our broader effort to kind of imbue climate wise principles into the preservation process. Um, and part of that as well is you see all of these original materials that Shannon mentioned that we're so fortunate to still have here um, in the property. As part of the work that they're gonna be doing, they're going to be taking an inventory of all of these existing materials that are still here. And through kind of that puzzle piece story that will come from the materials analysis with the UT students, is we'll be able to start figuring out um, where some of these materials would have originated from and kind of start telling the story of uh, the embodied carbon that's in this building. And when we say embodied carbon, we're talking about all of the energy that it took when this structure was originally built in 1906. So where all of the material or all of the wood was taken from, which forests they came from, um, the railways that were used to distribute those materials here. Um, and, and all of that is really important to consider in the broader conversation about sustainability. Um, you, if you're living in a historic house right now, you're already being a huge environmental advocate because you're already living in a space that exists. You're not taking down more trees, you're not um, mining the earth for more materials. So we're so excited for the Kelso House to be kind of this really amazing example of how we talk about that in the context of residential spaces. So stay tuned for more. Yeah, I mean, just to echo what, what Steph is saying too, it, it's so important to us to, to showcase as an, to, as an example of what can be done. Um, you know, we know, like from the perspective, from wearing my hat as the historic preservation officer, you know, a lot of times we, people come in through the office and they're asking to do things and we tell them yes or we tell them no and sometimes people want replacement windows and we say no replacement windows or whatever it is that we, you know, that we're trying to maintain that is original, the original siding, the original um, floor porch decking, all those types of things that we've talked about. Um, there's an added benefit to that and it is really that um, the value of the materials themselves, both the, the quality of the material because oftentimes they're old growth wood, they're stronger, They've lasted 100 years, why can't they last 100 more? I mean, all of those kinds of, of arguments, but it also is just such an important element of, of thinking about that embodied energy that's already exists in the building. And, you know, so many things that we're tackling as a society, um, climate issues, affordable housing issues, none of those things are going, we're never gonna win on those topics if we don't deal with our existing buildings and reinvest in them and reuse them in a way um, that is respectful of, of the investment that's already been made. Agree. <laughs> yeah. Should we go upstairs? Yeah, let's head upstairs. I love all this. Like, it's so beautiful, isn't it? Mm -hmm. It's crazy that somebody was like, yeah, I just I don't think I want to live here anymore. Yeah. Okay, so should we go upstairs? Let's go. Um, this is the, the the windows that we saw from the exterior that we mentioned. Um, this door obviously will go away. We don't need to walk out to the air. 
And the upstairs you'll see has very little um, that remains in terms of the interior, like finishes or anything like that. Um, a lot of that has been taken out from upstairs. But it does enable you to see um, some of how it's been constructed. You see the boards, you definitely see the, the roof structure, the rafters. Um, so it's kind of interesting from that perspective. It's so awesome. I've actually never been out here before since it's been fixed. I'm so excited. Like, how amazing is this? Drew, I can't wait for you to see it. You gotta come. Um, it's such a cool perspective from up here because you can see all the details, the little, the little design elements of the rafter tails. And this makes my heart happy. Um, you can also see there's the beginnings of a railing over here. Um, this is actually just a mock-up to kind of get scale. Um, we do have some historic photos um, that we will show you. And um, there's, a, there's a bit more detail to the railing design. Um, so ultimately, we'll be working with Guido to, to make sure that we get that detail as close as possible to the historic photos. Um, and we actually are hoping, I mean, we, pandemic not you know hopefully someday goes away um, the idea is that we can potentially utilize the porch railing um, recreation as another training opportunity um, for people here at the, at the Kelso House Learning Lab so, another thing while I'm up here like we've mentioned this a time or two but I, I it really is important and bears repeating to thank Guido for all the work that they've done. Um, Cosmo in particular has really been our champion, but his brother Chris has helped a lot. His, Marianne and Tom have been wonderful friends to POP. It's amazing how much work they've done and how much of that work was donated. Of course, we've paid, but we have definitely have not paid what they could have charged us. And so um, thank you, thank you, thank you to the Guidos. We can't state that enough. Um, while we're up here, I just want to give everyone just a sense of the scale of these columns. Um, I don't think I personally have been up here um, because uh, the porch was in, in such dire need of restoration, but I mean, these are huge. I'm 5'2 for scale. Um, so we were talking about those original column capitals on the first floor. I mean, these are like probably double the size in scale. So these are just enormously impressive in terms of the craftsmanship. And this is the first time I think that I've seen an original wood window screen. Me too. You're seeing this live, a discovery that we didn't know was here. Um, it, likely that all of the windows on this house featured a screen like this. Um, and just the, the proportion of these windows are very unique. They're very skinny and very tall. Um, so the detail here is also very exciting. Just another thing for us to recreate. <laughs> Absolutely, in a training course. We'll yes. teach everyone how to make their own window screens. Yeah, very Stay exciting. Stay tuned. Yeah, I'm absolutely amazed by this. Like, it's so exciting. Um, we talk about transoms a lot, but I really like that this one is kind of in its open stage. So this house was constructed in 1906 before the advent of air conditioning. So a lot of times you'll see um, in houses of this age, transoms, which are operational windows to actually promote um, the flow of air um, during when it's too hot or too cold. So you'll see this peppered throughout houses of this age. And I love that this one is here and it's very likely that they were inside the house as well. So another fun detail about historic structures. They cooled themselves. So this is probably one of my favorite rooms in the house. Um, one of the main reasons being is that this was also a site for one of our wood window workshops. The window over there that Shannon is closing um, used, to be very painted, used to be painted shut and um, as part of our wood window workshops we were able to make that fully functional again. So. That's very exciting. Um, and then one thing that I really love about this room as well 
is that you can see the backside of the beautiful shingles that are on the exterior of the home. So um, we have no reason to believe that all of this isn't original. So you can see um, how this house was put together, as Shannon mentioned earlier. And I don't know, I think it's very rare for people to be able to see kind of um, wood shingles from the opposite end. So it's kind of a unexpected benefit of being able to see what's behind these walls. So it's, it's such a great point. Like in a way it was, you know, it's sad when you first walk in and a lot of the interior of the upstairs especially is not here anymore. But then it also provides opportunities like Steph, Steph just described, which is kind of cool. Like downstairs we have a lot of the original kind of finishes in place, or at least we know enough about them to be able to recreate them. And upstairs, it's a little bit more of a, of a blank slate, but we get cool lessons like this in um, you know, kind of how the house was put together. Exactly. And another fun detail, um, here you can see the window weights of the original um, window here. So the, I always love being able to see kind of this part of the window. This is how it operates and just the scale of the weight required to make these windows operational. Um, so we're so glad that these aren't missing. They're kind of a hot commodity now um, if you're restoring houses. So I think it's, it's really great that we're able to um, restore the windows with their original um, so you can see them working over here. Love windows. <laughs> and one thing to point out too is I'm fairly confident that these are the original wood floors. Um, they're gonna look amazing when they're refinished, that's for sure. Um, you can see all of the life and love that has been given to them thus far with kind of the scuffs and the scratches you see here, but they look really stunning. So, as Shannon mentioned earlier, there's a lot of stuff in the Kelso house, but a lot of that stuff is also very good. Um, here, you can see a bunch of original wood windows that were saved at some point that were really eager to put back into openings where we need them. Um, as well as one of the many chimneys that is on this house. You can see it was clad in stucco on the interior, but you can see the beautiful kind of buff brick um, that goes through the roof. So I think anyone watching that is a fan of historic buildings will be like, wow, that's what a historic building looks like underneath the walls. So <laughs> we hope that you're as excited as we are. You can even see the shingles um, on the roof because uh, you know historically it had a, a shingle, like a shake, a wood shingle uh, roof, and so that's also kind of cool. Of course, there are lots of layers of other types of roofing above that, but from inside you can see them. Okay, well, so Steph and I brought you back out to the second floor porch because, frankly, because we're so excited for the opportunity to be out here on the second floor porch. It's so awesome. Just imagine when there's railings in place and there's no more face masks and we can actually have our Pop on the Rocks cocktail on the second floor porch. Um, that will be amazing. Yes, enough. yes. Save the date. We'll actually have a dark and stormy. Is that what we're having tonight? Yes, yes that's what we're having tonight. Um, out on this porch. We can't wait to host you guys here. Thanks! Yeah. <laughs>